Red Bull have started to receive regular challenges in the form of McLaren right behind their backs, which means that they need to up their game if they want to win both of the championships and continue the dominant streak that started back in 2022. A huge step will be made in Silverstone, the track that's similar to Barcelona is quite representative for how the cars would behave on the majority of the venues in 2024. But with Marco's latest statement, as well as Red Bull's increased tension, could we see them dropping the ball from Silverstone onwards? And more importantly, are they now definitely not the fastest team on the grid? It goes without saying that Red Bull have received quite the competition from Miami onwards, especially from McLaren, who managed to establish a stable platform that runs extremely efficient on low fuel and new tyres in the latter stints of the race, something that Verstappen found as quite an issue in Imola and Austria. However, the close racing in Austria got a bit too close for their liking, and it's evident that battles like this will persist throughout the 2024 season with Norris understanding what it's like to go against a three-time world champion who doesn't yield to any challenge presented to him. But what is more important is that Red Bull have never been pressurised to this level, which is why the upgrades that they are about to bring in Silverstone play a crucial role as to where the car would move towards. Earlier this month, Verstappen said that there's something wrong with the car, but they will still have no idea how to fix it and even in such a dominant weekend in Austria, it was obvious that the car wouldn't have gotten caught in the end thanks to the tyre advantage and the late stage performance that McLaren demonstrated on the track. Therefore, Marco emphasised the next upgrade package in Silverstone as crucial to see whether or not the team would be in a lot of trouble in the second half of the season. And when talking about this matter to a greater extent, the veteran Austrian said, We've been struggling with the current car issues since China, and somewhere you get to a point where you don't know where they came from. Mercedes has struggled with this for a long time, and Aston Martin is struggling with it at the moment, but we weren't used to that before. We don't know where in the technology or in the simulator the difference between theory and reality is. The car has potential, and until China we were superior. We thought it would be an easy season, just boring for the spectators, but we are working on it, and there will be an upgrade at Silverstone. It has to be right, because otherwise it will be difficult for us in 2024. Red Bull have recognised the threat that's coming from McLaren, but that itself doesn't fix the issue. They need to work extremely hard, as they have been outscored by two teams in the last five races, McLaren and Mercedes, and are extremely close with Ferrari on this regard. The issue of Perez is quite persistent too, and as we saw in Austria, if it's not Verstappen winning races, the team cannot rely on the Mexican to step up even though he drove the race with a lot of downforce loss issues as a result from the lap 1 crash he participated in with Piastri and Leclerc. Be that as it may, Verstappen still managed to finish the race ahead of his teammates after driving a full lap with three tyres, went into the pit stop and served a 10 second penalty at the end of the race as well. Which goes to show where Red Bull currently stands with their driver's lineup. If the upgrades in Silverstone tend to not work precisely as they're meant to, then it could very well mean that both of the championships will be under threat, because the difference between Verstappen and Norris in P2 is just 81 points. And although that sounds like too much to catch, bear in mind that one DNF or one bad result is what it takes for the narrative to change entirely. And even Verstappen himself urged the team to up the upgrade process and speed it up with precise results because right now he feels like the car he is driving, although able to be maximised to its full potential, is far away from the best one on the grid. His driving skills have been quite impeccable in Austria, as well as all of the other races that have been won where Norris had the ultimate package, but Verstappen himself cannot always prey on the fact that when he doesn't win a race, it won't be Leclerc or Norris right behind him to capitalise on these failures. When talking about the expectations ahead of Silverstone, Verstappen went on to say, We are analysing what we did right as well as what went wrong, and it is the last race of a very busy triple header, so we want to come back fighting in Silverstone. This will be a special race, and we want to come back stronger and ready for the weekend in Silverstone. This is the team's 20th year, which marks a celebration for us. It would be quite interesting to see where Red Bull stacks up here, because similar to Barcelona, this track has a lot of medium and high-speed corners combined with a couple of slow ones at the ending stages, and that makes it a perfect combination for an all-round package to work wonders. However, Marco himself doesn't believe that the car they have is the most dominant right now, 
and while the pecking order has changed beneath them, with Mercedes also joining the top three and now firmly establishing themselves as the third fastest team behind Red Bull and McLaren, it would be interesting to see a proper fight at the front and a consistent challenger to Verstappen's fourth championship defence. When talking about the RB20's dominance, one that was quite brought into question if we are to compare performance of Perez and Verstappen ever since Miami, Marco went on to say, The balance of power behind us has changed so far. Ferrari was once the strongest chaser, now it's McLaren and Mercedes is coming back in the mix. But McLaren in particular has made up a lot of ground and has a better car than we have, especially in terms of setup. Their car works on every track and with every type of tyre. We have had problems in the last few races and it has taken us a long time to find the balance. Right now in terms of balance, we are number two. This is definitely something that worries Red Bull to the extent of losing the Constructors' Championship, but with them resigning Perez, who might even lose the sixth spot in the Drivers' Championship before the summer break. It's not something that's been imposed on them by others, rather than by themselves. While he is definitely not a threat to the Drivers' Championship, Perez's inability to be close to Max and score consistent podiums, or even enter Q3 on a regular basis, goes to show that the team will have a lot to work on their hands in the Constructors' Championship. With the drivers' category being something that has been eyed up from Norris and McLaren, especially after the harsh battle that we witnessed in Austria, it is interesting to witness Red Bull facing issues with the simulator and the on-track performance, as they have joined the club of Mercedes and Aston Martin, teams that have changed their philosophy a lot for the current season and while this doesn't directly spell bad news for the Austrian team given the fact that they have Verstappen, even in the hands of the Dutchman, the car seems to struggle in the late parts of the race. This is where the car gets a little bit lighter due to the fuel load not being as big in the first couple of stints, and in these conditions, the MCL38 of Norris has always managed to get some ground compared to the RB20 of Verstappen. Even in Austria, with the slow pit stop of Verstappen, when both of them exited the pit lane the difference was around 3 seconds, and Norris managed to neutralise that in a couple of laps, which indicates towards the fact that a fight was going to happen regardless of how Verstappen's pit stop went. But one thing is for sure, the battle between Norris and Verstappen won't stop any time soon, and with Ferrari dropping the ball a little bit, as they hope to bounce back now that they've found more downforce with their upgrades, but struggle to align it with the SF24, the MCL38 seems like the biggest challenger that Red Bull can face right now. When talking about the crash in Austria and whether or not it has ruined the relationship between Norris and Verstappen, Horner was adamant that nothing will be the same, but has also added that there's an element that the young Brit has learned, which is to fight with the three-time world champion in a way that suits the Dutchman more than any other driver. This is something that he could be learning a lot from drivers like Leclerc and Hamilton, who managed to avoid contact with Verstappen but still beat him in these close duels. And although Austria is already behind us, the next track in Silverstone is poised to be a real show, as McLaren will also introduce upgrades of their own, meaning that they won't stop chasing more performance and a better upper hand in both of the championships. With all of this in mind, do you think that Verstappen and Red Bull can establish dominance yet again in Silverstone? And more importantly, do you think that the team is in trouble if the upgrades turn out to not be working as they would have hoped? Let us know in the comments below and once you do that, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.